behind me, that's the old wing. I'm gonna use that today to demonstrate how to assemble a wing. This one's rather kind of assemb uh, disassembled. So, um, what does it take to assemble a short packed wing without instructions when you've never done it before and you've got no one that has any knowledge to help you? We're about to find out. Without passion, perseverance and patience, failure will be the only option. Stuart Riddell, 2022. I collected the wing from the International Transport Company in Brisbane on the 13th of October. The next video, which was going to be this video, which I've kind of switched around, it might even still be that way. Um, my nine first flights since the rebuild. What have I been doing? Well, I've been working hard. It's coming up to Christmas. Everything's got really busy all of a sudden. But I've been able to get nine flying days. I spoke about the weather. Today's not too bad, but believe it or not, it's really hot, thermal, and nasty. So I wouldn't be flying today. Today's probably the best day, but I'd have to have gone really early. Enough waffle. You get the point. Um, soon, I guess, I'll be flying again shortly. And um, got a new camera bracket thing too that I've made, which I think is just the best. There's several steps that you have to do in a particular order to achieve correct assembly. And another thing I might mention is that with the weather the way it's been, there's people lawn mowing, so excuse the noise in the background if you hear it. I'm going to use something called DaVinci Resolve's new voice isolation system in the new version of DaVinci we'll see if we can eliminate the noise as best we can. Let's get on with the wing. Time to unleash. The Real Story Microlight Wing Assembly Challenges Today we are going behind the scenes. What it takes to get a trike, microlight, flex wing, powered hang glider thingy flying again. Call it what you will. I learnt a lot and had to persevere and overcome many obstacles to complete the wing assembly without instructions. PM decided not to supply anything. The wing IPC is missing on their website, and to top it all off, there were several parts missing. Unbelievable, and I'm obviously not happy about any of it. I waited 10 months for this. I had to use parts from my old wing to complete the task. I now await the new parts. I am still owed. PM, where are you? There will be a last minute update about this at the end of this video. Did I get my parts? At the time of publishing this video, I had completed nine flights in the new Sparkles version 2.0 Microlite, three of which were cross-country outlandings. She is going very well, but getting her back into the skies was very challenging, not to mention the 10 to 12 months of waiting since the crash. And I am not at all comfortable in turbulence right now, None at all. I was hoping to start my journey back into the air before our warmer months, before the winds and thermals began, but it was not to be due to wing delays. So now let's begin our look at the challenges assembling my new wing. Mostly due to the fact that we're short packed for shipping. One of the best landings ever, my first landing in the trike. Shame about these flipping birds. Incidentally, 
we no longer have PM Aviation Agent in Australia. Assembly is all a case of when and how. When do you do each step? How do you complete it? Get it out of sequence and you are doomed to fail. I had to reverse my steps many times. Here is the list of issues I faced. The center top rib installation. Wingtip extensions insertion. Slot alignment and how far. How to get the front leading edge tube screws back in. In a wash out rod upside down. Wash out rod pitch and roll trim cords. This is how I would do it now if I had to do it over again. In summary, with the wing folded but loose and untied, remove leading edge tag screws at the nose. When you receive your short packed wing, you'll receive it with this tang under the screw. So you remove the screw, this allows the tang then to come out and you can slide the fabric down the wing. Oh, there's supposed to be tube connected here. Anyway, that allows the wingtip then to slide down further as well. And by doing that, you can then put the wingtip and extension in into the uh, end of the wing. Once you've done that, you won't be able to put the screw back in. So we'll just keep it here safe and sound for now. This tang, believe it or not, once you've got that wingtip, will only come to about here. You won't get it in. And that's while the wing is relaxed, um, it's not tensioned. In order to fit that tang back under the screw, the wing has to be fully tensioned. This allows the fabric to slide back up the leading edge and this tang will get closer. And you might even need a fringe to help you pull that tang into alignment, put the screw back in. Then the leading edge is under full tension, as long as the webbing is on the end of the wing tip on the extension tip. Insert the wing extensions and align make sure they're fully inserted this part which is normally attached to the nose and not snapped off stops about here and the rest of the wing here which doesn't have that tube you can see is folded in on itself to make the whole wing shorter than what it is on this side what we have to do is insert this section here that part which comes separately into that part which of course would all be inside the main leading edge of the wing let's take a look at me trying to assemble that incidentally you'll see that I've got blue lines on here and that was to help me know how far in and how to align that tube into this because remember I had no instructions I had no ideas so I had to double check on my old wing, how was it supposed to fit together? Right, so the idea that I came up with was on the leading edge tube, this one, there's a bolt here, and that's a, uh, a for the slot on this part here to fit into. So the idea is to load this up to here, slide that up there, and of course, Without this line, as you can see, you wouldn't know where it's meant to line up with. I found another way of doing it, incidentally. So anyway, we know where it's got to be now because I've marked it. I can just slide this right in. And as you can see, if you don't get it lined up properly, the slot doesn't line up with the bolt. And of course, now it's stuck. How did that happen? Oh, it's all expanding in the heat. Let me get a hammer. Now this is an old wing, I wouldn't do this to yours. And if you do, do it carefully. Right, so as I said, you've got to line that up with that. And it should, oh, it doesn't want to. I've marked where it's got to go. So 1345 millimeters, one, three, four, five was the length from there to there. 
and that's where it has to line up to this edge of the other tube here. So you can tap it in, whatever you need to do, I won't bother. But a better way, another way to, to line that bolt, locating bolt with the slot and make sure it's lined up. You can look down the tube, but you can look down this mounting bracket here, down the middle of it, and line that line up to that bolt there. And that should be the slot going in there. Once you've got that, and you've got a, a good reference here, you should, uh, once, if you get, what I'm trying to say is, if you mark this before you put it in, you'll know how far it's got to go in, and you'll know that it's in. If you don't do that, you won't know it's in. What will happen then is that the whole leading edge tube is too long, and you won't be able to get the webbing that's on the end of here, that holds it on the wing tip. You won't be able to get that over the end of the wing leading edge tip, um, and you won't be able to get the screws back in the front. Remove the nose screws. What the nose screw is, is it's a self-tapping screw that goes into the leading edge, and this nose screw is holding the fabric on the leading edge. These do very, very little in flight, but when you fold the wing, there's nothing to hold the sail from shifting down towards the wing tip. And uh, we'll get there in just a little bit, but you're gonna see that the, uh, there's just a strap that goes over the wing tip, and therefore if you don't keep tension on the strap, the strap could fall off when you fold the wing. So this comes right out, it goes right in. Now that I've removed this, as we start to make our next steps and put the wing straps on, we will not be able to get this screw in this hole again until the wing is fully assembled. So we're going to remove these. This allows the fabric to slide back up the leading edge and this tang will get closer. And you might even need a fringe to help you pull that tang into alignment, put the screw back in. Then the leading edge is under full tension, as long as the webbing is on the end of the wing tip on the extension tip. This is what it will look like when it's reassembled. After completing those things, the next part would be to assemble the wing as per normal, which would involve assembling the A-frame with the control bar in the middle and then rolling the wing up the right way. So it's standing on the A-frame and it's still in a loose configuration. It is not fully yet extended. You'll see that in these pictures. Yeah, well, um, considering the condition of the wing, <laughs> didn't do too bad. Upper aluminium batten. With the wing in its upright configuration, standing on the control bar, use some assistance too, don't you, uh, with um, trying to get everything sorted out here. And also rest the control bar on something soft like carpet, mat, something, just to prevent it from getting scratched on concrete. Probably not so bad if you're on grass like I am here. The next thing I want to do, because a lot of people have said something about this too, it's very hard to get the centre rib in place. Now the way I found to do that was to completely fold the wing completely down the line, just tuck the leading edges right into the centre um, heel tube, and then you can fit this long I can't even get it out now, I didn't know that. This is only part of it. It's about three times longer than this. The long centre rib batten. Fit that. Once it's in, it stays in. Okay, next step after that, we're going to fold the wing completely right out again. Am I going to put this back in? Don't think so. So, we're going to fold the wing completely back out again. Why is that? Because as I said earlier, we want to get the tangs back on the screws. And as I said, in order to do that, we need to pull the wing right out, full stretch. And then we can um, get a mate to help pull those tangs into alignment, put the screws back in. Now those screws, all they do, these tangs, is hold the, the uh, leading edge fabric from sliding down the wing when the wing's folded up and packed away. That means that next time you get it out and unfold it to fly, or assemble the wing at least, they won't have moved. They'll stay where they're meant to be. And these are under maximum tension for what, you know, for the leading edge. Um, the tension is greater folded than when it's unfolded because when it's folded, it's trying to pull back. 
But when it's flying, the angle of the leading edge tubes makes the wing uh, leading edges want to stay up the front. So that's the next step. That's the top rib, the center one, the one that's the hardest to get in. And then with the wing now half extended out. Okay, you're probably now asking, what's the next step? Well, we've got everything assembled. We've got the swan catch in here. Everything's good. We've got the wing now stretched out. We've got the screws back in. Well, of course, we're nearly there. What we have to do now is, again, slacken the wing tension about halfway. And that way then we can put the, these battens, the top battens, the ribs, into the wing pockets. Now, putting the wing ribs in, before we do that, we've got to make sure that they fit the profile that comes with the wing. There's a batten profile sheet. Make sure all the profiles are the right shape. If they're not, then make sure you've got the right experience, you know what you're doing, and don't over bend them, but you've got to curve them around your knee, around your belly, however you want to do it. Not on a sharp surface. Don't do that, because you'll cr uh, crimp it, and then it will be no good. So make sure they're the right profile and install those. Insert or stick on or Velcro on the center hang point protection. This will Velcro onto the upper surface above the hang point. Wing tip protectors stick onto the wing tips. I didn't know where some of these parts went. Install the upper aluminium battens. And now with the wing fully extended and tensioned, Fully locked, open. With assistance one at a time, pull the leading edges together and insert the screws. Install trailing edge flat battens. Install end wingtip lateral or span wise carbon fibre battens. Install the lower carbon fibre battens. And fit the batten elastic cord retainers. Well, that's kind of how I got the job done after much trial and error. Now, my wing came unflowing, untested from the factory. The new wing. This one was test flowing three years ago, four years ago, whenever it was, 2018. But the new wing wasn't. So in my head, I had that wall of confidence to overcome and before I could even fly it, there was one more, well, two more jobs to do. One was to install the wash rod pull-out cords, and the other one was to install the STARS stability roll system, anti-roll system, whatever it is, the um, stability system, roll system that um, allows us to, to uh, adjust the wingtips so that you can adjust in flight for straight flight without having a tendency for a roll one direction or another. And of course it's affected by speed, but that's another thing. The thing is that knowing how to set up these cords was going to be another challenge. Um, where do they tie to? Let me show you that. But in the instruction, in the IPC and in the owner's manual, um, there are good instructions on how to do that once you understand what the diagrams are showing and what you should do first of all is fully and I can't recommend this enough fully um, understand how the the roll system works and how the pitching system works and how the washout rod system is supposed to work and where everything's supposed to be and not only how does it work, but what does it do when it's working? Why is it doing what it's working? Understand that first and then adjusting everything with the cords should be straightforward. Hope that makes sense. I'll show you one now. Here's one we prepared earlier. <laughs> right, our old friend, the leading edge tube, the broken one. This is the washout rod. Normally when the wings folded, it would be here like this. So when we open the wing, there's this yellow cord which attaches to that end and there's another yellow cord that attaches here and when we open the wing, it will be opened up like so. 
This other cord is another cord that will comes from this one to the end of the wing, to the wing tip. There's another washout rod, in this case this bent one, and it will get pulled by that cord out and extended to this point here. This cord here, which is upside down, I think, something's upside down. Anyway, this cord, uh, this, this washout rod has to be in that position. There's a steel cable here, it has to be at full tension. This, uh, this bungee cord here allows this to be pulled back when the wing's folded back up again. But this, this must be here, and this pulley system here is all part of the STARS system and the pitch control system. So, well, not really, well, part of the pitch control system. Read about that, it's really interesting to understand how the wing works. Um, this washout rod's been bent in the crash as well, bent and cracked. Um, but yeah, the blue, the blue cable, this is the one you want to know about probably. What the blue cable does is adjusts the roll system and the pitching of the wing. Again, read the instructions. I'm not going to explain it to you here, but you need to get these at the right tension. They connect back to the center of the wing and then this, this system here connects back to the handle. It's on the right hand control bar uh, down to, um, and that's where you do your, your roll control adjustments. Let me show you though, I had a real problem with this. Where this yellow cord goes, they supply yellow cord. Great. It's supposed to pull out this washout rod. Where does it connect to? I had no idea, because it wasn't connected obviously. I'll show you. What was missing? Well, I had to make the left and right inner carbon fiber number two lower battens and reuse the wing tip spanwise carbon fiber battens from my old wing. On the 20th of October, I sent an email to PM Aviation specifying the missing parts. I then made several attempts to get a response from the factory. The update after that was 28th of November. I have finally had a response from PM Aviation in India. The missing parts will be sent in the next few weeks, apparently. At least I finally got a long awaited response. Unfortunately, the wing IPC is still missing on the website, but PM have now sent me a copy. Let me know if you would like me to send it to you. As of today, which is now the 16th of December, let me just enter in the UK, PM Aviation in the UK. Um, downloads and we go to the parts lists and we scroll down and we look for the quick R, quick R GTR wing and look at that I believe that's there now no that's the parts yeah that's it IPC so the as of this date now the 16th of December since I last looked two three weeks ago the website now has the new IPC wing parts manual, illustrated parts catalog. Awesome, thanks India. So you're probably wondering what's gonna to happen to this wing now. Well, now that I've showed you this video, I'm gonna strip it down and I'm gonna use what parts I can as spares. Some of them are okay. Um, I wouldn't reuse cables, obviously not tubes, the fabrics had it, but there's a lot of fittings that as long as they look okay, um, they might be reusable and if not this apparently this aluminium aircraft tubing is very useful for some projects not aircraft obviously but um, right look at this good webbing sleeving here might be able to do something with some of this stuff yeah I might be a bit of a hoarder but anyway there's some stuff here that we can reuse so as you can see if you don't know what you're doing with a short packed wing and you don't have instructions and you've never done it before, there's a few things you've got to work out along the way and you have to do everything in the correct sequence or you won't get it right. We had many attempts to try and work out why the wing tip um, webbing wouldn't go over the tips and it was because of that tube wasn't lined up into the slot properly and I didn't know how far in it was supposed to go and I couldn't tell it wasn't lined up. There'll be tricks that we don't know about but I worked out a couple and I hope they will help you today. 
and uh, yeah there's just a whole lot of little things like I said in the end I fiddled with the pitch control and the washout rod cords uh, a few times and when I was confident everything was right once I understood how they're supposed to work from reading the manual several times understanding that there's nothing on the internet anywhere no one can give you any help with this unless you know someone that's done it before once I knew it was right and I was confident it was time to do some test flying anyway that was in previous videos hope you enjoyed this video hopefully it's helpful to someone special shout out to Larry Mednick he put up a short packed wing video about I don't know what was it a year two three years ago um, and there was a few key things in that even though it was north wing this is PM wing there were similarities that helped me get to the point of actually assimil um, assembling the the new wing okay i hope this video helped someone it would have helped me if i had had it prior to receiving the wing until next time stay safe bye for now see you next flight